Sorry if you can hear a fan in the background there. It's like a million degrees in this room and yeah, it's hot. So let's crack on. Perhaps one of my favourite genres is Japanese cyberpunk. It was a genre that existed in the late 80s to early 90s. It was interesting, weird, and sadly came and went in the early 90s. Most films within this genre broke the conventions of traditional cinema, whether that be lack of plot, body horror, scenes that exist just for artistic purposes, or sometimes have no plot at all. And what better person to do that than director Shozen Fukui. Fukui started off as a videographer for live gigs in Tokyo and gradually got into the film industry, making a few shorts in University, Caterpillar and Gerarist, two incredibly bizarre films with little to no plot and just full of experimental editing and bizarre soundscapes. Gerarist is the most bizarre of the two as it involves a woman terrorising bystanders with vomit, Gerarist being a Japanese word for vomit terrorist, or a rough abbreviation of that. The woman screams at the top of her lungs and crawls along the floor. You can even hear the people in the crowd laughing at her in bewilderment. It's crazy great fun. In the late 80s he went on to make Metal Days, his first full-length feature about a group of punks who steal military weapons. And that's it, that is all that's known of the film. Because it is impossible to watch or even find unless you have the original VHS. Which again, is impossible to find. This doesn't apply though if you're this lucky bastard. All that exists of the film are the front cover and just a few blurry screen grabs. It's sadly been trapped in format hell and I wish it would be transferred to a digital format one day. Fast forward to 1991, and he would go on to create his second experimental full-length feature, 964 Pinocchio. 964 Pinocchio is about a sex android named Pinocchio, who is dumped by his owner because he fails to perform sexual acts. However, Pinocchio is a man that has had his memory wiped by a shady company that specialises in kidnapping and wiping people's memories so that they can be used for clients with a bad case of the horn. It's pretty disturbing stuff, and when Pinocchio is left to fend for himself, unable to make sense of the world, he stumbles into a mysterious woman named Himiko, who spends her days drawing maps of Tokyo for other potential androids that have been discarded. She does look after him, attempting to rehabilitate him back into society, However, when the news breaks out to the shady company that Pinocchio is in the wild, they freak out and go on the hunt to find him and eventually dispose of him. And that is really the best way I can describe the plot here because there really isn't much of one. It relies heavily on being abstract with its surreal editing style and intense sound design, which in all honesty I think it stands out from the crowd of other experimental art films. Scene-wise, I personally love scenes of characters attempting to fit into society, going into a supermarket and eating free food samples. Himiko trying to stop Pinocchio grabbing products like a naughty child, until he chooses violence and scrans a croissant. I just love how the various employees look in complete confusion as they do this. It's great. Another standout moment for me is during a huge tracking shot of Pinocchio running through Tokyo where people scream and look in bewilderment as they see him rush past. It never fails to make me laugh. A majority of 964 Pinocchio was filmed without permits, resulting in most of the scenes that were shot being done entirely guerrilla style. This worked as it prevented Fukui and his film crew being stopped by the police. I think this works as a stroke of luck to bring you more of a frantic atmosphere. I simply love how they used every resource they had to put the project together and make it work, showing us the degradation of someone whose mind has been artificially removed. There are little sprinklings of Fukui's influences in some parts. The most noticeable one is where Himiko charges through a subway station, convulsing and vomiting a staggering amount of what appears to be porridge, which to me seems to reference the harrowing but iconic scene in Andrei Zalowski's Possession, where Isabella Ajani goes through a manic episode in an underground. Something that I've noticed as well is the ending to Night for Pinocchio. Himiko and Pinocchio become one as this massive giant head. And to me that kind of resembled where the metal fetishist and the salaryman eventually become one massive humanoid fleshy tank. When the film was released in 1991, it received a fairly good reception from late night moviegoers. It was passed around word of mouth and gradually became very popular. According to Fukui in an interview on the Unearthed Films release, the film was played in large live houses where they could utilise their loud built-in sound systems and make the experience uh, more intense and unbearable. 
Apparently at times, according to Fukui, venues would get so crowded that it would bend fire and safety regulation where people would sit on top of the seats where other people were sat just so they could actually, you know, get a seat in the actual screening. Could you imagine the chaos of those screenings? It does sound like fun though. Sadly, the entire cast has never acted in anything since. Uh, Heiji Suzuki, who played Pinocchio, rumouredly went to work on a farm after its release. It's a shame that no representatives from Honor Films, or anyone for that matter, caught up with any of the cast for an anniversary event, so to speak, or even to get their view on working with Fukui or what it was like to actually work on the movie. It just seems like they've all dropped from the face of the earth. It's crazy. 964 Pinocchio is an interesting and batshit crazy film that does show us the possibility of a disturbing future where human beings are altered for somebody's sexual fantasies. It's got creativity going off on all cylinders and is a blast to revisit now and again. But in all honesty, if you're coming into this wanting a gripping story, yeah, don't bother with this film for story, you're just wasting your time. There is a narrative floating around, but at the end of the day, it's purely just art and there's nothing wrong with that. And like that with the small success of 964 Pinocchio, five years later, Fukui went on to release his black and white splatter nightmare, Rubber's Lover. To keep this video from being too long, I'm going to split it into two parts to make it more engaging. So thanks for watching guys, do like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for part two.